The history of humanity is in many ways defined by one single desire, to live forever. From Ponce de Leon's search for the fountain of youth, to Kin Shi Wong's obsession with the elixir of life, to King Arthur's quest for the Holy Grail, we've often missed one simple truth. The immortality was right there for the taking. For greatness is remembered, but legends never die. There's seldom moments in one's life where you can pinpoint the exact day where your life has changed. And for one of our players, September 25th, 2022 is that day. After years of dedication, thousands of hours of practice and preparation, it comes down to this. One moment, one match to prove their worth, walk away with a quarter of a million dollars and garner the title greatest in the world. Clash Royale League World Finals Day 3 starts now. We do see the Mortar out from Sandbox. Skeletons in response from the Soto. Archer Queen as well. Should be able to clean up the Mortar very nicely. Will it be able to get the shot? And it does. Archer Queen slightly damaged. Sandbox has to respond to this. A pre-lock, huge pre-lock here. That's just some really very, very nice prediction play. Even when you don't even know your opponent's deck. And right there, messes up with the Fire Spirit timing. Not gonna be able to get the jump on top of the bats. Played just a little bit too early. Lock in response from Basoto. That, he, he had a lot of potential with that push. If he could have got the Fire Spirit, I, I think we would have seen two to three to four more Hoggies shots. Yeah, if he could have got that Fire Spirit connection, that would have been a lot of damage on the right. Notice that three card cycle from the Archer Queen as well. Cycling back to that log, really clutching up that defense from that counter push. Archer Queen already played once again in response to the Miner. Poison going to come out, trying to take out most of the Archer Queen. Not entirely, though. Now will Basoto try and set up his push? He does. Earthquake coming out. This is very aggressive from Basoto. Will be able to activate the ability, but it's not going to put in that much work. Lock to clean it up. That's getting a lot of value in this matchup right now. Samuel needs a way to find that Fire Spirit connection on the bats if he wants to break through for a massive amount of damage. 400 HP separating the two players. So we do see the Royal Hogs, the Quick Cycle, Archer Queen, plus the Earthquake. It does Will Sandbox be able to defend properly knowing that whenever he doesn't have the Skeleton King plus the Log or the Bats plus the Log, he has to use Mortar against that Earthquake? I think he will. Mortar's one of those Lincoln or buildings that have a really nice time versus Earthquake just because of the sheer amount of health that it has. Um, the other thing that you can be doing potentially is going for the anti-Earthquake placement and using something to push it over like a log or maybe even a Skeleton. Right there, Poison Plus Log will be able to take it out, but not before the Archer Queen puts in a beautiful amount of damage. Skeletons do stack up onto the tower, getting one shot, two shots right there. Earthquake coming out on top of the Musketeer. A little baby push on the left side, but I do believe delivery is in cycle, and that is the case. Going to clean that up very nicely. Not a lot of pressure so far from Sandbox. Really nice job of going for those minor bats combos when the fire speed's out of cycle, but road delivery is going to be cleaned up very nicely once again. I really like how Samuel's doing a good job of just distracting this mortar constantly when it's coming at the bridge here. Cannot let any sort of connection like that happen. We saw yesterday that the Archer Queen was able to get pushed by the Hogs. Today, the Archer Queen does not get pushed. Royal Hogs make it to the tower, 732. And uh, I mean, we are gonna see a little bit of damage on the left. I like the second mortar. I think that's absolutely what he needs to be doing. Skeletons will be able to take the aggro of the mortar shot and the bomb terror will be able to help out and uh, clean it up very nicely. This is a massive amount of pressure. Sandbox is doing a great job of trying to get back into this game, but now he has to defend this round of pigs. Right there, Royal Hogs plus EQ. We need another card. Skeleton Army plays beautifully. I don't think any of the Hogs will make it to the tower, so that's a very difficult interaction. If he doesn't play it at that exact timing, at least one of those Hogs will be able to hit it. Or if you play too fast, obviously, Earthquake takes out the entire Skarmy. Sandbox going for the Skeleton King to try and predict the Royal Hogs, but Samuel's just going straight for Earthquake and Log Cycle. Here comes the Minor Bass combo. Roll Delivery gonna drop on everything. Misses the Musketeer, though. There's two Bomb Towers on the field right now. I don't see this Mortar locking on. Basoto will be starting off his tournament 5-0. and oh. There we go. Basoto takes the tower out with the Earthquake Log Cycles throughout the end of the match. I mean, it was really throughout the middle of the match. He was just using the Earthquake, using Log. He got that early bit of damage, and when that Mortar wasn't in Cycle, and he only had that S plus bats, he got so much damage. 
absolutely. I think Sandbox was a bit nervous there. His cycle was a little bit slower. Um, I think generally there you have to be having a little bit more solid defense, but he also needs to be applying more pressure. He was so defensively minded that he was never able to get and keep up with that damage. Tombstone in the middle from Sandbox, starting it off here, maybe going back to some comfort, maybe a Royal Giant deck here. Arrows come out, so most likely not. Most likely going to see a Lava Hound from Sandbox. And Sam with the Ghost and the Barbro would most likely be playing some drill in this situation. Yeah, especially after we do see that Giant Skeleton. Sandbox does have the uh, most impressive game, in my opinion, when he lost. I think, he, I mean, his only loss before just now, he, uh, he lost with RG against, I think it was a Mighty Miner Mortar deck. And it, it was just so impressive how he just uh, controlled the entire game. And right here, Giant Skeleton oh, wow. will be able to make it. So as soon as I say something great about Sandbox, Giant Skeleton on top of his tower, he cannot afford to make that mistake. I can't believe that just happened. I think the nerves are getting to him. He played perfect the first few days, and now making big mistake, not pulling that giant skeleton with the tombstone. Those are the kind of things you just can't be doing in a matchup like this. He's not out of it quite yet, though. He does have a very nice Lava Hound beatdown pu push that could come in once we get into Double Elixir. Looks like he's just going to sack this tower and send it straight for the Lava Hound. Yeah, and that has to be just gorgeous recognition from Basoto right there. He knows that he can go in with Ghost. Sandbox isn't in, you know, a prime position to be able to defend that. And right here, this Hunter will be able to put in so much work because he's just going to kind of haul everything at the bridge. You can't really place anything behind it, otherwise you're giving way too much fireball value with the Hunter. Giant Skeleton perfectly protecting the Hunter here. Gonna blow up all of those Lava Pups. Mighty Miner ability not really getting much done here. Sam's going kind of for a desperation flying machine at the bridge here, and it's just not gonna be enough. Sam has quite a bit of elixir to mitigate and distract. 1625, still the HP remaining on Basoto's first tower, and 50 seconds left. I mean, we are 50 seconds away from seeing Basoto make it to, I believe it's the top three. I mean, already guaranteed. No, maybe I'm wrong. It's, I think he is already guaranteed wow. 80,000 if he does that. But right here, we do see the mirror on the left side. I like that he uses the first one on the right side. The hunter is out. Now he has that chance. Mighty Miner is going to get picked up by this Fishman. Very well played. Both players are going all in with both of their respective pushes right now. The thing is, Sandbox needs two towers since this right-hand side tower is going down. There's two giant skellies on the board in RG. What's going... I don't think he can defend this. Yeah, we do see the double hunters, the double giant skeletons, the single RG, all on top of the tower, the double RG. There it is, 1552 with the bomb explodes, not gonna matter. There we go, Basoto takes the three crown, takes the set overall. A beautiful start to the day. Samuel Basoto, he was not the favorite going into this match. He does not care about the community predictions. He is undefeated on this weekend. I did not expect it. I don't think anybody did. All of our casters' predictions took Sandbox there. Only match played against these two players were in the August qualifier. Air Surfer was actually able to win two to one. <laughs> <laughs> Both players throwing out the good lucks, and wouldn't you know it, Air Surfer throwing out the pig with the gold emote, his favorite emote of all time. And uh, yeah, I, I love that for him. He, he found what he loves, and that's great to see. Not everyone is able to do that. Speaking of what we love, looks like Air Surfer is going to take what deck Morton loves most, a log bait, and Morton's going to be using what looks to be a drill bridge jump. No, a drill from Air Surfer as well, so maybe we will see a mirror matcher. Right there, Wallbreakers will not be hit from the Dark Prince. The E-Wiz will come out in response guards to clean up the cannon cart. And just a, uh, a Dark Goblin for the E-Spirit. And I love that placement right there. Fire Spirit is not going to allow the Dark Prince to get the dash on top of the tower, but it's also not going to go to the Dark Goblin because he plays it on the outside tile. I absolutely love that play as well. You still gotta be feeling pretty good if you're Morton right now. This Barbarian gets a shot as well, a decent damage lead, and that's what you're looking for in a mere matchup like this. 
Right there, drill cycle to the right. And again, we do see the wall breakers, same lane. So you have to wonder when he's going to try and switch that up. We do see the NATO plus Golden Knight. That's going to be, I mean, technically an 8 4 6, especially when he's going to be able to defend the guard. So that's kind of just a good spot for Air Surfer. Air Surfer just wants to continue to uh, keep up the pressure, especially in single elixir. I think the later this game goes on, the more it will be or could be in Air Surfer's favor. He is going to be having a big spell in this version, whereas Morton is really going to be relying on those Golden Knights and Magic Archer connections. Right there, Dark Goblin will be able to clean it up very nicely. Valk on top of the Cannon Cart. Drill plus Dark Goblin, and hopefully, are we going to see the Wall Breakers? Not going to happen. One minute left. How does he want to respond? He was on top of the Dark Goblin. And right there, Air Surfer down 275 HP to Morton. The other thing to really think about here is how e e these players are counting each other's drill. Morn always having that Dark Prince in cycle is very, very useful. On the other hand, Air Surfer has the Valkyrie, which can be pulled by the Tornado to maybe get some Goblin connections in the future. Fire Spirit not able to protect the Dark Goblin, but a brilliant Fireball from Air Surfer allows the Valk to fully take out the Executioner. And uh, yeah, now, I mean, we're, we're fairly tied up. Valk is always going to provide a lot of value on defense. And this Dark Goblin is so hard to stop. You have to assume that Air Surfer, I mean, it, the, the game just gets so weird with this deck. I mean, every time we can say, oh, this player has wow. matchup, the, these drill decks are just so funky and just kind of win sometimes. King Tower activation from Morton, that's an absolutely beautiful play. It's going to help out quite a bit in the later stages of this game. Big counter push from Air Surfer, though. Let's see if he's able to cycle back to a drill. He is. Big counter push. Let's see how the damage ends up here. Oh, wow, you hear the crowd right there. Executioner played brilliantly, able to take out the Valk, the Dark Goblin, and I think it was the Fire Spirit as well. Only he can play it. I uh, I say that because I was looking over the games from, I think it was game two. Actually gets the shot and another one. I another think. one. Wow. That's a lot of damage. Another thing to remember in this mirror matchup is the true red, true blue interactions. As we can see here, Air Surfer is always, nope, not able to get that Goblin shot. So this Gold Knight is doing a lot of damage as well, though. Morton has a very solid lead right now. Yeah, Air Surfer just cannot stop this offensive pressure. Infernal Tower at the bridge, and that's just going to be zapped by the Ewis. We do see it. it was able to take out the Cannon Cart, so I guess it was able to do what it was supposed to do. But now it's just awkward. You see more troops crossing the bridge in a good spot. And a nice little NATO. Dark Goblin not going to be able to provide too much value. Dark Goblin oh is... Oh my goodness. Oh my god. These executioners are absolutely destroying the tower. Air Surfer needs to be preventing as much damage as possible. He still has a very small chance to win just because Morton does not have a big spell. Wallbreaker does connect. Anything can happen, but he needs to start clutching up on the defense, like I said. Yeah. Are we going to see the Valk on top? There it is. We are going to see the Valk on top. Cannonkart not going to be able to matter. Drill on top, everything, everything is just trying to eat away at this tower and it's almost gonna happen. Fireball just barely able to keep it alive. 30 seconds left in this match. Another set of wall breakers, but Morton setting up, stacking up everything in his defense, realizing Air Surfer has to go on this right lane. 180, I don't think the guards are gonna be able to make it, especially with the NATO to help out. It's not over just yet, now it is. Morton takes game number one, the drill without the giant skeleton, especially after the nerf. We do like seeing this new variation pop up. Morton with a brilliant game number one. So while Basoto is the only player to go 4-0, although now 6-0 uh, throughout, uh, throughout this bracket, Morton has gone a combined 4-1, now 5-1. His only loss against Mugi, so I think that's forgiven. I think technically we can say there are two <laughs> players who are undefeated throughout this bracket. I can 100% agree with that. Nice zap from Morton here. Looks like we're going to be having now a minor mirror matchup. Obviously a bit different. Morton with the Mega Knight minor, whereas Air Surfer using a Mortar minor Skeleton King. This Mortar Miner Skeleton King deck is so popular in these World Finals. It wasn't as popular before. Do you think there's a main reason for that, or do you think it's just kind of a fad? Yeah, I, uh, I, I think that's a great question because, you know, we're still seeing the Giant Skeleton, so then you have to assume maybe it's because of the, uh, the, the loss of Mirror in every single deck. Uh, but right here, Absolutely. It, it, it just, it's... It's always been strong. That was never the problem. It's just, oh, you know, the cards that are in this deck probably just work better with other cards like the Mirror and Giant Skeleton. 
for sure. So the other big thing in this matchup is the fact that Morton has two small spells. This version of Mega Knight Minor Wall Breakers doesn't always have two small spells, but this one does, and that's gonna be extremely useful for Morton going down the line here. He can always just arrows the Skarmy, zap the bags, and he's gonna be in a really nice spot. Yeah, it's going to uh, require some very skilled gameplay from the Musketeer use of Air Surfer. And there we go, Prince does get a shot. And to, to, to top it all off, the Mortar doesn't shoot the tower. Instead, it goes for the already dead Prince. Another round of bats here, cleaning up the counter push. Miner's chipping away a little bit on this left side tower. Still anybody's game, but if you are Morton, you gotta be feeling pretty good after an interaction like that. Morton using one of my favorite decks in the game. We do still need to see the Mega Knight pop out because technically it still could be any card and still not gonna see it. So he's electing to uh, just keep the pace of the battle. And I, I, I like that from him. I think it should work out uh, at, at least in this specific matchup. Yeah, maybe he's saving that Mega Knight in order to defend with it and get some nice value. Maybe we'll see it on the Musketeer here potentially to get a nice Mega Knight Prince push going. Yeah, and there we go. We do see it. Is the zap going to come down on the bats? No, we do see. I mean, I, I would like to see a prediction zap. Okay, not going to happen. Not going to get too crazy. He doesn't need it. Mega Knight does get the jump. Miner on top of the Mega Knight. But I think the Prince might get a shot if he doesn't play any more troops. Bats come out in response. A great situation for Morton. And I really like that idea for Morton to save up a little bit of Elixir, get the arrows down the bats, and then save the zap for the Skarmy. Because the Skarmy is a card that's going to get a lot more value unless you have that instantaneous zap to clear it off the board right away. Right there, places the Mega Knight at the bridge. Will be able to protect the Archer Queen from getting splashed on by the Mortar. Zap will come out shortly. There it is, every single time. Not missing a singular Skelly. Archer Queen going to pop its ability. Skeleton King not going to be able to do enough. That Talon one bat. 818. Wow, look at that bat. That bat did so much damage. Arch Queen is going to get cleaned up right now. Air Surfer going for the Morden left hand side. He realized he has to go opposite lane and apply pressure if he wants to make anything happen right now. But another Miner comes through. Air Surfer is able to catch it, but this is a mount monster push. And the Skeleton King ability is not going to be able to be charged by the Skarmy. The Zap is always coming out so fast. Yeah, I mean, these Zaps have been phenomenal. And, uh, you know, it's not often we get to talk about Zap play being phenomenal. So it's kind of cool that we get to here. Ghost continually cycled on the right side just as pressure this time elects to use it in the back on the left side perfect defense from air surfer in that last sequence and he does get a nice couple minor or sorry mortar shots in order to supplement some damage here we're heading into triple elixir now let's see if air server is able to find a way to come back despite the double small spells here Right there, Skeleton Army to protect the Mortar. No Zap in tow, so that Prince will be taken out fully, 505. And there we go, we do see him electing to use the Zap on top of the tower instead, 273 on the Crown Tower. Once again, just perfect spell usage from Morton. Again, he realizes he doesn't need to Zap that Skarmy. The Mortar is already dead. He decides to save it for the bats on the other end to ensure his damage. A nice little prediction snowball from Air Surfer. Will he be able to protect the Musketeer? Miner used on defense. That's not what you need. You need the damage. Air Surfer in a lot of trouble. Arch Queen ability is going to pop, take out a lot of these bats, as well as get a couple shots this morning. Only 10 seconds left. Air Surfer needs a miracle if he wants to take this game right now. Mega Knight will not jump. We do see the poison plus the snowball. Morton will not lock onto the crown tower. Morton will take a 2-0, our second 2-0 of the day already. 2-0, and that is going to be Morton advancing, sending Air Surfer into the lower bracket. You hear the crowd go wild. You see the fire, the flames. He's got to be feeling great at this point, but still a look of focus on his face, realizing he still has another match or two to play. Samuel Basoto, Morton still alive. Winner goes on to our grand finals, where whoever stays there will have to lose twice in a row to get that taken away from them, and then you can see, maybe you've heard of them, maybe they've matched up before. Moogie and Mo Light, arguably the best players in the world, are gonna battle it out in our lower semis. The defending world champion and the un, like one of the undisputed like best players in the world, just the consistency from that side. This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the broadcast. This is what I want to see. No offense to any of the other players that didn't make it through, but this gameplay that we're gonna about that we're going to about to be watching 
is going to be perfect. Well, if I'm not calling that match, I'm not getting off this desk. I don't care what you guys do. You're going to have to drag me out of here. And good luck's out from both sides. Morton opens up with the Fire Spirit. E Spirit to catch it. Sam most likely you'll be seeing like an RG. Morton with maybe a little bit of a trusty Mighty Minor Wall Breakers. Of course, Minor Wall Breakers overall, one of Morton's favorite archetypes. It was about a year and a half where it was primarily what he was running. Of course, this one going to be Drill Wall Breakers instead. Drill plus a Bomber at the bridge here. I really like the placement of the Drill there from Morton. Able to pull that Giant Skelly back and allow that Bomber to get some nice splash on the tower. Huge damage lead so far, but a big Giant Skelly coming down the right. Guards will pick that up, and that was also a nice fireball on the Archer Queen, assisted by the Princess Tower to get her off the board. So as we go through the first minute of gameplay, nice damage lead for Morton on that right-hand side, 23-43, and Elixir pretty much even between these two competitors. Samuel's just looking to make it to that double Elixir time where he can stack up and make these big beatdown-esque Giant Skelly RG pushes. Morton, hopefully, Probably has that Inferno Tower for his last card, so he might be able to deal with those pushes quite nicely, even if it makes it there. A lot of DPS in the deck here for Morton when you get those guards involved. And there you go, Inferno Tower out. That is a huge card. Lightning, lightning just on the Inferno Tower. No Princess Tower damage. So while the Inferno Tower goes out, only gets the one RG shot and no extra. Wallbreakers on the left, really nice play. Forcing out the log in the right on the guards, and Sam's now down down to two, two, six, eight on this left-hand side. He's got a damage lead on both sides now. You know, looking at that lightning juicy, it really feels like the Inferno Tower and maybe the Bomber are the only really viable targets here. Absolutely, lightning not getting a very much value versus those guards. In order to break through from Sam, he needs the lightning on the Inferno, but he also needs a log plus pre-E spirit to take out those guards and get an RG connected. Falcon Bomber cycle to the right-hand side for Morton. Queen picked up by the guards in the left-hand lane. Samuel Basoto building up behind this giant skeleton on the right-hand side. Fisherman getting a, not, a lot of value here. Pulling in that Bomber, pulling in that Valk. Giant Skelly doing its thing. Wallbreaker's unable to connect, and Sam not able to get anything through on the left-hand side pressure either. And those guards will at least contend with that Fisherman as a new giant skeleton to the left-hand lane. Fire Spirit does not get splash damage. Morton setting up that Inferno Tower low. I really like this early Inferno Tower, realizing that if he needs to cycle back to a second one, it will be available to him as long as he plays four cards after dropping. And just waiting to make sure that Inferno Tower did its job against the giant skeleton. Going a little bit past 10 there was Morton. Valkyrie's gonna have to drop again on this ghost. Very even match all of a sudden. Sam's done a nice job of getting some lightning damage chip on this right-hand side, as well as a couple of queen shots here there. Minor plus wall breakers to the right-hand side. I mean, drill plus wall breakers. Wall breakers will not get there, courtesy of the Royal Ghost plus log. Guards to the right-hand side. Valk working on the left. Fire Spirit to try to get all that off the board. Queen does go down, well defended by the German. I wonder if that guards was a misclick. It didn't seem like an optimal play. Now there's a very large push coming in, and Samuel has enough elixir for that lightning for the Inferno. Lightning on the Inferno does get half of its burn. Guards will finish off the Royal Giant with the Valkyrie. Now Ghost in reply to the Royal Giant. Minute 15 left, and right now it is Samuel Basoto with the lead, courtesy of mostly that lightning cycle on the right-hand side, 1579. Drill plus Bomber once again here. Can he defend this properly? Very nice giant skelly placement here, but the Goblin is going to get one connection. Little wow. Bomber splash, and that puts us right back in it. 1579 to 1549 as we enter Triple Elixir. Drill coming down the left. Sam does pick that up quite nicely with a double drop. Fire Spear on the right is picked up by the E Spear. It's going to help defend these wall breakers as well. There's going to be a huge counter push. Sam has some beautiful defense right here. Archer Queen healthy on the right-hand side. Drill goes, Fisherman trapped on the wrong side of the drill. Guards up high, Fire Spirit that's taken out by the Archer Queen. She does not get shots because of the very, very high lightning. Lightning played outside of tower range. Drill to push back the Royal Giant, but one shot gets in. 22 seconds left, separated by almost 300 HP. Morton just used his win condition on defense. He's going all out on this right hand side while he tries to cycle back to that drill. Queen plus everything is defending quite nicely. Sam needs to defend this perfectly. And the Goblin gets on the tower! The log misses! It's not gonna do it! Morton with the, the fireball. fireball! Morton 
wins it's game enough. number one! It's Ford enough! Ford wins game number one! Wow! Slight mistake on Samuel's end there. The log was just a bit too early. He wanted to try and kill that goblin as soon as possible, but it ended up being a huge mistake. Those two goblins that spawned from the death spawns there just able to take a massive amount of chunk from that tower. And blood finally drawn from the Brazilian. Samuel Bosoto has been able to withstand the onslaughts throughout this event, but Morton finally gets that first jab in the nose and takes what looked like was a lost game back in his control. Yeah, that was beautiful gameplay from both players there. I think Sam just need to hunker down and keep defending a little bit more at the end there. More than able to just capitalize on a slight mistake here there. And now, as we were talking about before, this is the first loss from Samuel to in this tournament. Is he going to be able to bounce back? Good luck from both sides. Morton with a little eye check there on his opponent. You love to see it. I, you know, it's always one of those benefits having these players so close together. Samuel looks like he's just focused. He's in the zone. He wants to get immersed by that gameplay right now. Bit of a slow start here from both players, just cycling bats and minor there for a bit of added pressure. Gold Knight gonna pick that up. It's gonna make sure to tank for those bats as well. A bit of a counter push from Morty here. Skelly King's gonna pick that up. This Mortar Skelly King deck has been so popular today. This might be our third or fourth time seeing it. It really has. Skeleton Army on the right hand side gonna fill up that Skelly King ability, but Baby Dragon, one of the best splash cards in the game, should have this under decent control. Tornado is going to be forced out though. Uh, overall, good pressure from Samuel there. He's up a bit of a lecture. He does have to count his Baby Dragon. And that's interesting seeing him go with this Mortar Miner deck, knowing that NATO was very likely here in game number two. Of course, with NATO now on cycle, let's see if Samuel goes with a back position, and he does. Picked up, predicted easily by the Golden Knight. One bat does escape, gets a little nip there on the left hand tower. Really important cannon card placement right here. A lot of players would just go for low cannon cards or maybe just play off to the side to make sure to take out the Musketeer. But the awareness that Sam might go on the opposite lane with a bit of pressure to ensure that we take out that Skelly King as well, that was beautiful. And now it's Morton, about a three and a half elixir advantage. Sets up with the flying machine in the back. Flying machine's a very interesting card here. It could get a lot of value. It's all about the protection of the glass cannons once again here. Who can protect their musketeer? Who can protect their flying machine better? That's going to be the make or break for this match. Keep in mind, Fireball out for Samuel Basoto. So Morgan going to have a card there that's going to really give some fits and starts to Samuel, depending on how these bridge fights go down. Absolutely. Poison, you know, it does the job, just not quick enough a lot of the time with those flying machines. Minor bats on this right inside. Gold Knight gonna pick that up once again. I don't think we are gonna be seeing a Skelly King ability. Overall, this match is pretty chill, but the Golem's gonna drop in the back, and I really like this timing for this push. This is fascinating. Morton has run Golem four times in CRL this season, and I believe he lost all four of those. Three to Muhammad Light, one to Air Surfer. Choosing Golem here in game number two. Judge Juicy, talk to me about this pick. I think the main reason for the pick here is to be unpredictable, number one. Number two, generally, if you, it is something that you're trying to snipe something with. And overall, I'm really happy with his deck pick. I think he has a very nice matchup in this game. Mortar gonna go down here. Nato pulls all that together. Oh. Golden Knight dash on tower. Cannon cart is free and clear. Tower down. There you go! Morton is going to our championship match! Very impressive. I could not be more excited. The crowd is even more excited than I am, though. Huge push, double bay drag, cannon cart. Everything went right. The tornado was the cherry on top, and that tower went down faster than my heart is beating right now. Oh my word. Golem has been a problem for Morton. Yeah, Muhammad is definitely in his element. Samuel, in order to get back into that good mindset, he's gonna have to reset completely and really just take some deep breaths and have some confidence. Even though he lost that game versus Morton, you have to be able to realize, even when you're going against the best player in the world, that you still have a shot. Let's get into game number one. Mo Light, bottom of your screen. Samuel Basoto at the top. Mo just climbed the mountain that was Mugi and comes out better on the other side. Hog Rider at the bridge has started off. Five Street defend this bar but Sam's got the tornado. One of the best counters to the Hog Rider. Gonna get that King Tar activation as well. 
I love this call here by Samuel, just having the NATO in hand, game number one. He saw how dominant Mohamed Light was with the Hog Rider in that previous set, and now he decides to respond with one of the best counters in the game for it. Basoto going to drill, and Mo with a nice catch there on the Hog. I really like that idea to go for the Hog on defense, soak up those goblins while the Queen takes them out, and it nets him a Hog Rider shot as well. It doesn't get better than that. AQ at the bridge, dealing with this giant skeleton. Ghost gonna support as well. No tank coming from Mo here. If he had a Valkyrie or something like this, he probably would have played it. Instead, he opts for the cannon. That makes me think maybe his last card is a roll delivery, potentially. Golden Knight cycled in the back. We've seen some incredible Golden Knight connections today. We've also seen Golden Knight paired with Golem a good amount. And as I heard Rich and Josh talking about a lot, why is it here? Well, who knows? It's been working out pretty dang well for a lot of people. Now Molite setting the line at the bridge. It is going to be a giant skeleton. This Magic Archer is preventing the skeletons from letting the drill make zero damage. And that's going to be a huge connection for Samuel here. I don't know if it was on purpose, but if it was, that was beautiful interaction. Samwell with Drill. It's been working out for him all right. Four times only in competitive and a 50% win rate there, but obviously a lot harder to gauge when he's going to bring it out when it hasn't had that much success. Absolutely. Magic Archer at the bridge here, going to snipe out this cannon, try and get this ghost to the tower, forcing out an Archer Queen on the defense. Obsolene Tower is going to help take that out, and Queen's going to have no problems with this Magic Archer. But the Giant Skelly at the bridge, just to protect that, preserve that Queen health, I really like that play. A little fun fact here for you guys at home that might be following along with the numbers. Samuel Basoto has a 100% win rate on his run to Clash Royale League. 2022 World Finals against our top 16 players, except for Mohamed Light. He's the only one that Sam dropped the set to, and that was a 2-0 run. And that's no surprise, really. Very nice defense overall from Mo. On the other hand, Sam is having some problems dealing with these hog riders. Mo always seems to find a way to get that hog to the tower and get a shot. Perfect placement there on the Fire Spirit. Hog Rider took a quick peek over that Princess Tower, decides to go to the King and now a Golden Knight to meet this Archer Queen. You mentioned the, the King Tower and the Tornado. It is a great counter to the Hog Rider, but we can see, look at that King Tower health. Yeah. There's so many shots coming through. At some point, Sam's not gonna have the luxury to be able to tornado these hogs to the King Tower every single time. That three crown conversation is definitely showing its face here. And now Sam gonna try to get a little bit of damage out of this Royal Ghost. Mo says, no, that's not gonna be as easy as you think. Skelly's first, then a Fire Spirit. Ooh. And now the Royal Ghost still gets the shot. 21, 41, 22, 94. 100 seconds remain. That's a really important amount of damage there. That could make the difference between in a win and loss. Hog Rider left inside, Arch Queen plus Cannon over here. Another Tornado the King, and check this out. Can we see a second hit? Look at that. A lot of damage, actually the most damage on the yeah. King Tower right now for Mo. Lowest tower health there for Basoto is his King Tower, so gonna have to start innovating his defenses. Muhammad Light very happy to keep getting those hogs on that King Tower. And now a drill must come out defensively. Earthquake cycle in. I really like the fact that Mo, oh. I really like how Mo decided to go for that pre-earthquake there, realizing Sam does not have the ability to keep tornadoing these hogs to the king. Mohammed Light setting the line cannon up high. Magic Archer goes to the Hog Rider. Now we'll see where this NATO goes. Decides not to pull the trigger as the right tower and the king tower are the ones that Basoto's most concerned about. And a giant skeleton meet each other at the bridge. I really like that block. Now the tower is able to focus on this goblin drill, but the log comes out really early. And the second set of skeletons is doing its best. On the left here, Hog is able to get a nice shot there. I like that Sam is trying to get units on the board to create counter pushes, but Mo is just not giving him an inch. And now another Hog Rider comes down, which means a NATO must come in. He goes back instead of the King, and the Hog <gasps> still gets a oh! shot. It gets a big shot, and the Earthquake Cycle, 13-40, 21-16. Mo in control. 15 seconds left, huge counter push from Samuel. He needs to defend perfectly here. Log comes out at the perfect timing. Tornado is trying to get the Gold Knight or the March. The cannon the lines up. The, the cannon, cannon is lines up. up. The Magic Arch but it's not enough. Five. Not enough. Mohammed Light takes game number one. Beautiful gameplay there. I loved it all.
beautiful way of using your skeletons, your fire spirit, and your log to make sure those drills weren't getting damaged, and just constantly cycling hogs throughout the match. That was the way to win, and he executed it fantastic. Mo at the bottom of your screen, one game in the pocket. Samuel at the top, fighting back here to even things up to take us to a game number three in our lower bracket finals. Sam really needs this win if he wants to force it to a game three. Both players leaking some licks are waiting for each other to make a play. You know, and I don't blame him, especially in a situation like this where this win, this game matters so much. Winner of this set is guaranteed $125,000, which is an incredible prize purse that is guaranteed. Mo smiling. I, I, I'm going to say it's because he heard me. I don't think it is, but I'm going to say that's the reason. Whereas the loser walks away with 80 k Not a bad weekend here in Finland. That's a big jump up, 45 k Looks like we are into the match now. Sam going with that Skelly King in the back, a baby dragon from Mo. Definitely going to be seeing a Lava Hound deck from Sam, a tornado. Could be a lot of things. It could be a splash or deck. It could be another golem deck that we've seen so much. I wonder well. if it's golem. I wonder if he goes splash. I'm sure you'd be happy to see splash juicy, but golem has been incredibly popular it all has. weekend long. Absolutely, cannon card from Sam. So maybe not lava hound. Some sort of fireball bait deck. Yes, here comes a minor minion horde on the left hand side. And Mo is back to that baby dragon, making quick work of most of those minions. But now you see the minions coming in. A nice NATO and a King Tower activation. And he's got a skeleton king on that right hand tower. Really fascinating to see him not use the ability there. Maybe he didn't have the elixir for it right away. And by the time the Skarmory came down, just not seeing a lot of value there. I respect it. Yeah. Full reset now. Very even in elixir. Still, could be Splash Shard or Golem from Mo. I would say most likely Splash Shard, though, after seeing that Ice Wizard. I'm happy to see it. Yeah, I bet, Juicy. I mean, this is one of the biggest matches that anyone could call in their career. And if they're playing your favorite win condition, it's always fun. Fireball down on top of the Baby Dragon and the Tombstone. Mo was ready to go with the Ice Wizard. And now Skeleton King comes in. Really nice tornado to ensure that flying machine does die. Ice Wizard is going to get a lot of value now, helping take out this Skelly King. I'm really loving the tombstone here, just going to kind of block these miners coming in. Miner on the tower here. Splash should come in on that tower. No, it just barely misses. Perfect placement from Mohammed Light, which is surprising to absolutely nobody. Poison on the flying machine, cannon cart in the back. If you're Mo right now, you're gonna switch lanes. He does have more damage on the right hand side, but as a splasher player, you need to be playing same lane as a, as your opponent. Get those very nice defenses and convert to the counter pushes, and that's exactly what he's doing. No, he pressures his right hand side. Perfect moment. And Ice Wiz gets on tower. Minion Horde to respond. That's great poison value there for Muhammad Light. Damage is pouring in the slow, making that Princess Tower shoot much more slowly. 2074, 1286. Muhammad Light has Sam up against the ropes. Huge push, counter push from Samuel on the left hand side. Cannon Cart's gonna get a lot of value. Flying Machine, Cannon Cart, Mortar, Miner on the map. Mo does not have a lot of elixir right now. Mo's definitely getting overwhelmed here. He has a little shrug of the face, maybe okay with what's happening. Mortar gets a shot in on that tower. 13 44, 12 86, 90 seconds remain. This game is so close. The further it gets here, the Splash Shard is going to have a further and further advantage, especially with the Skelly King, a champion in this deck, that three-card cycle graveyards can be devastating a triple. And you see there Samwell piling up at the bridge, baiting out that poison, now knowing the Minion Horde kind of has a clear path, but you still have to think about that NATO and what it can do with an Ice Wiz or Baby Dragon in tow. Not able to pick up the Miner. And Sam is going to take the damage lead by quite a bit here. Mortar at the bridge. Tombstone going to pick this up. Make sure it's not splashing on that Skelly King. And here comes the Graver on the right. And a nice body block there by Basoto. Flying Machine in the back instead of the Minion Horde. Poison not on top of the Flying Machine. Decent cleanup there for Samwell. And then he goes Minion Horde at the bridge. Ice Wiz gets a solid value here. Another Mortar on the left. You have to distract it. You have to catch this Miner as well. Barbara coming down left. Tornado is going to pull that Miner off the tower. But watch this Cannon Cart. He does get the Skelly King down in time. I think he's okay. Perfect timing, perfect placement there for Mo, but only 996 to 981. As you said, Juicy Splash Yard should be flourishing right now with only 26 seconds remain. Nice high line set with that Minion Horde getting on top of the Baby Dragon, and a Miner goes to the tower. The pre-poison for the Skarmy, that's going to be a huge connection. That's going to be that's Tower it. Down on the right-hand side. Mo Light going to take the win in that match. Mohammed Light going to the Grand Final.
titles once again. Martin, Mo, is there anything else you could ask for? And you see there, Mama Light, so proud of her son, Mohammed Light, going to the grand finals two years in a row. This is what I'm talking about. This is the match I wanted to see. Ooh, the big thing here is Mo has to beat Morton twice if he wants to take that crown, though. That's right. You got to take four games off of Morton in the next two sets, and that is something that has been near impossible. Jackson, any last thoughts here on this great world final? I'm totally speechless. If anyone deserved to be the world champion, it was you, Mo. Congratulations. Congratulations one more time to Mohamed Light. On behalf of everybody here at Clash Royale League, first, a big thank you to the entire crew working for two world championships throughout this week. Sleepless nights, a big round of applause for everyone there in the back making this thing happen. This is our team, Andrew Guy, Juicy J, Joshua AC Sharon, I'm Rich Slayton. We'll see you next year for Clash Royale League. Mo, 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 Mo!